Okay, so much like our, our previous apps we built, we just need to associate a book to a given user at any moment. So to do that, typically when you create a new book, it needs to be saved with the user ID. And to do that, we can go to our books controller. Since we scaffold this, a lot of the work is done for us, but we do need to update this to include a new action uh, that will be primarily responsible for adding the book to our library. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify this set book action uh, to allow that to happen, or basically just be able to access the book and mention. Uh, and that is done through this call right here. So we find it by ID. And then we need, uh, since we're using device, we need to do a before action, authenticate user with bang, and then we'll do accept instead of only, and then we'll do index and show. So those are public. And to associate all the books, index looks good to me. To create a new book, you can do current user books.build. So if you're following along my previous apps, that's probably familiar. Let's see, edit, create, it's gonna be similar, current user books.build, and then we pass in the book parameters. Okay, so the library action I mentioned prior is where we're gonna do some different logic we're not typically used to doing, so let's define it here. And what we wanna do is just say, we wanna add and remove books from library from to library and then it's going to be for the current user so say for current user and this is all happening in one action so we're determining a parameter so we're going to pass in a parameter that we're calling type in this case and a parameter can be passed into a link to. It can be anything that you want to pass through. It'll extend itself as a question mark in the URL that you pass through. It allows Rails to grab that um, and do stuff with it. So it's kind of neat. So we're going to do a conditional here to see if the type is equal to add. And then we could do else if. And remember, there's no extra E on else if in Ruby. I couldn't tell you why, but it's just weird. So we'll have this kind of block stuff going on. So if this happens, we're gonna say current user library additions. And then we're gonna add in the book. So this adds it to that array is what that's going on. It basically pops it in there or pushes it, I should say. Um, and the, the library additions is what we define in our model. If you remember in the last video, so if you go to our, uh, let's see, user, that's what we're associating it with there. So that's how we're calling it. And we can save that down. There is another thing we wanna do is to redirect back to library index path, which we still need to set in our routes. And then when we do that, we'll, we can pass in what book we added uh, in quotes here. Make sure it's double quotes. If you're doing this interpolation, it won't work with single quotes. Okay, and that's that. If we do else if type equals remove current user library additions dot delete book I'm passing the book and mention there and we're able to grab this because we passed it in up here and that is pointing to this so we're jumping all over the, the file but it's actually more uh, object oriented okay so we deleted that book and then we can redirect to the uh, root path in this case. And then we'll do notice. Same interpolation here. So that book title, we can still grab that book title in memory, which is awesome. So removed from your library. 
And then we have finally an else. Just say, oh, if there is no type is missing, nothing should happen. So we'll just say redirect to book path with the notice. Looks like nothing happened. Try again or something. I'll try once more. Okay, and that's that action. So to make that really work, of course we need our views to be in sync with these actions, but our routes are definite. So let's go ahead and modify those. Right now we have a route to our home.index, which is just something that was set up using that kickoff uh, repo that I made. So we need to modify that to be books index for sure. If I can type. And besides that, um, we do need our resources for library. I like to do it this way, resources library. And we only need the index path on it. I still need to make the library controller, which while I'm at it, I'll just create this one by hand. So library, I can spell again, controller. RV. And I'll just copy this and change the name. Cool. So just to double check, we do need to authenticate the user before they enter this path. Because the library is a big part of the app in terms of being behind the paywall. And we'll just pass in a default there. And then um, we can just grab all the library books. I'm going to call it library books. And we'll just get the current users. They should be logged in at this point. So it's OK to use current user. And then we'll get the library additions we referenced before. So that's how we're able to go through that library model through the user. That's that for that one. And we are. We only have that index action since we just created it on that controller. Good to go. We do need the view still, so why don't I go ahead and create that before I forget. We don't have a folder yet for library, so we'll make a new one it's called library. And then just inside that, we'll have an index HTML file. So index HTML ERB. So that's heavily Rails convention oriented there. So each route's going to correspond to a folder that's whatever you called it, plus um, whatever actions you have on it. So we created that action. It was called index. Here's index. And we'll get into the views in a later video. This is going to be more of getting the architecture uh, set up. So uh, we weren't quite done with our routes file. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to that and modify it a bit. So we have our main books route resources routes. So those are restful routes, but inside that you can actually add more uh, that aren't restful. So in this case, we're going to do a member do end, and these are going to be just one offs where we can have a put of type and it'll be add and then two, we'll go to that action. So we go to books library and then we'll do another one that's remove. It's going to go to the same action. And by action, this is going to our books controller and that library action. So books controller, library. And then we're determining what the type is as it's passed through through a link, which we'll add to our views in a second. Uh, aside from that, we need a registrations controller. And in previous series, we've done something similar to this, but this is going to be for a different reason. And that's going to be a redirect after a user signs up. And all we need to do is just create that controller. So we'll registrations controller. Or RB. Oh, I can't spell. I need to rename that to RB. 
And in here we can just extend from device and it's going to look like this. So class registrations controller extends from the device registrations controller and then we in that I need to set this to Ruby cool we'll do a protected method or action and then this is it so we're gonna do after sign up path for pass in resource and this is coming from device so this is just something you can hook into so don't think I'm creating this anywhere um, all I want to do is just give it a, a route of pricing wham that's it so when a user signs up they go to this path now and you could do that in a fancier way of actually determining a path with a rails helper but I think this works just as fine this will be whatever you want to name your pricing or wherever you display your plans, so to speak. So it could be plans, whatever you want. And on that topic, let's create a uh, pricing controller. This one's going to be simple too. Class pricing. Controller extends from application controller. I don't want to download Java. Okay. And we want to do something different here. Um, you can determine a different layout per controller. So we have a default application layout. You can make as many layouts as you want, um, but typically you want to just kind of inherit the same one as you're, so you're not repeating code over and over. Uh, but since our subscribe route or our path to basically buy something, I want to eliminate distractions from the user, which involves clicking different things or other links, buttons, etc. I just want the user to opt into the flow and buy something. So. It's kind of a dark UX pattern, but it actually does work. And you might notice it if you ever go to shop online. Once you get to your checkout, there's nothing there to really, you know, defer you from what you're doing. They try to limit you to only being able to use your back button even sometimes. So that's what we're going to kind of emulate. So layout, subscribe, we're going to have to create that one. And index, we just need an index path here just to display our pricing. Okay, so I keep making controllers. Hopefully this isn't confusing. Uh, it'll make more sense as we define our routes and uh, our routes and our views. So let's make sure we have all of our routes intact. We did our registrations. We do need our pricing and we'll do something similar to library here. Could just do pricing. And I missed a bit here. This needs a colon. That will fail if not. In fact, I'll just leave that not spaced. Books index is the root. Uh, we need a resources subscriptions. We don't have our subscriptions controller yet, so I'll just do that. Go ahead and do that. And I'll just generate everything there. We could probably just do, I think it's just new and create. I could be wrong. New, create, and destroy. Let's just do resources. It'll generate all of them for us. It's okay. So we can generate a subscriptions controller now. So I'll just do Rails generate subscriptions. All right, let's put controller subscriptions. And I think that should work. It doesn't actually create the actions since we didn't define any. So there's, it should just be a blank slate in here, which is perfect because I don't want every one of them. So this is also going to take in our layout of subscribe. And since we're referencing that, I want to actually make it so our app doesn't error out. So I'll just go ahead and do subscribe, html.erb. And I'll go into basically copy our application template 
and you don't really need to duplicate all this. You could do something like a content for tag where you can just inject stuff, but so to keep this simple so I don't confuse you, we're gonna get rid of anything that distracts the user. And I'm gonna get rid of that. And this needs to be Rails, not, not SQL Rails, but Rails HTML. Okay, so we got our container and sign up links. Uh, we actually don't want pretty much anything to do with this nav bar is the big the big thing. So I'm gonna get rid of everything but do we even want the nav bar? I'm gonna keep the brand and our nav itself, but I don't want the link for sure, because I don't want it to actually go back to the root path from this point. So that's coming down to just that in our subscription or subscribe, it should be called layout. Uh, everything else is looking good. We can do a has text white because I'm going to make it a dark nav bar and you just pass that in right here. And one thing we need to add is our uh, actual stripe library so you can add you can comma separate libraries to add here as long as they're absolute URLs so I'll do that JS dot stripe and it's gonna be version 3 for this so dot com says v3 with a forward slash and this one could be we can we can have this on if we really want Didn't really matter if that's there or not. Uh, we do have our font awesome already there. And that looks pretty good. One last thing to add, which we will definitely need, is to be able to inject in our a publishable, publishable key from Stripe. So I'm gonna make a new tag using Rails, and it's gonna be a meta tag with the name called Stripe Key. We're, we're gonna access this with JavaScript later on once we get to it. And we'll do a content. And this is gonna be, this is how we're gonna access that credential we made earlier. So application.credentials, this is the new features to Rails. So Stripe publishable key. This is gonna be what you named it. If you follow along, this should be matching what I'm using. Okay, and then we can probably, uh, let me see if I can make a route to check, see if that's working. In fact, if I just go and put this on the application real quick, just to see if it's gonna work. I just wanna verify that that key is coming back. Okay, so our default local host is the books now, if you noticed. Uh, I might just view source. And that key is not coming back, so we need to double check why. Yep, okay, cool, so that's coming back now. So if you don't have that back, you'll need to restart your server just like I did. We have our library, uh, we're at localhost 3000. All of our controllers are pretty much set. We still need to add quite a bit of logic to, the, to each of those. Um, so definitely don't output this in the application controller. We don't need it throughout, but we do need it on our subscribe layout. Um, that's gonna give us the path where we're accessing Stripe and using Stripe the most. Uh, so that's good and great. The next videos will probably be me getting into configuring the controllers a bit more. We did the book controller. We probably need to do every bit more. Same with the library and pricing and stuff like that. So I will figure that out in the next video and we'll kind of keep pushing along.